Mega corporations help generate inequality by funneling profits upwards to the ultra rich. Fun fun funneling profits upwards. Since 2020, almost 5 billion people have become more poor. Five billion people have become more poor. It opened with a pandemic that devastated lives and economies. Add to that the challenges of a really prolonged cost of living crisis, climate breakdown, and war. Progress against poverty has nearly stalled. Devastated lives and economies. Add to that the challenges of a 
really prolonged possible living crisis, climate breakdown, and war. Progress against poverty is nearly solved. Oxfam says there is another glaring issue, the unequal distribution of wealth. Three times the rate of inflation. Three times the rate of inflation. The the wealth has grown enormously. The, The wealth has grown enormously. Five billion people have become more poor. There's a reason education sucks. It's the same reason that it will never, ever, ever be fixed. It's never going to get any better. Don't look for it. Be happy with what you got. Because the owners of this country don't want that. I'm talking about the real owners now. The big, re- the wealthy, that the real owners, the big wealthy business interests that control things and make all the important decisions. Forget the politicians. They're, they're, they're an irrelevant. The politicians are put there to give you the idea that you have freedom of choice. You don't. You have no choice. You have owners. They own you. They own everything. They own all the important land. They own and control the corporations. They've long since bought and paid for the Senate, the Congress, the state houses, the city halls. They got the judges in their back pockets. And they own all the big media, the media, news, all the big media companies. So they control just about all of the news and information you get to hear. They got you by the balls. They, they spend billions of dollars every year lobbying, lobbying to get what they want. And I uh, am conscious of the fact that workers are anxious to maintain and advance their living standards within the society. I would like, I would like a society where there wasn't employee, em, uh, employer relations. I would like an end to industrial strife. But if you want an end to industrial strife, give it a classless society where there are no employers and employees. And that'll, that'll, that'll remove it. There'll be no conflict then. See, we talk about powerful people in this society. And, you know, if you read William Hickey, one of the prominent uh, newspapers, you would think that the powerful people are the uh, captains of industry, stockbrokers, bankers, you know, and other people we see here 
horseshoes, etc., etc., Royal Ascot. Oh, all, all the important people, eh? Well, I'm prepared to uh, volunteer the services of the Clyde workers. We'll build boats, luxury yachts, we'll fill them full of food and all the rest of it, and we'll send these powerful, important people in British society touring the seas of the world for six or nine months. And you know something? We wouldn't notice their absence unless some society columnist drew our attention to it. Because you don't really mind. But let the workers, let the dockers go and simultaneously decide they're having a holiday. And Britain's in the brink of a national disaster because it's the dockers, it's the engineers, it's the real women, it's the workers that are the really powerful people in this society. And I think if the TUC call a general strike, one day, at least it will be a demonstration to the workers of who's the real power in this land because we produce the wealth. Wealth isn't produced in any boardroom, it's produced in the factory floor and it will demonstrate that fact to the workers in the first instance and give them a renewed confidence in their power and in their ability to shape uh, developments and their own destinies. I got rid of Roe v. Wade. I'm the one that got rid of Roe v. Wade. I was able to do it, and I was very honored to do it. Do you believe in punishment for abortion, yes or no, as a principle? Uh, the answer is that there has to be some form of punishment. For the woman? Yeah, there has to be some form. There, of course, remains a vital role for the federal government in protecting unborn life. Nobody has ever done more for right to life than Donald Trump. Roe v. Wade, they won. They finally won. I'll show you politics in America. Here it is, right here. I think the puppet on the right shares my beliefs. I think the puppet on the left is more to my liking. Hey, wait a minute. There's one guy holding up both puppets. Shut up. Go back to bed, America. Your government is in control. Here's love connection. Watch this and get fat and stupid. By the way, keep drinking beer, you fucking morons. government that uses the media in order to keep people stupid, my throat gets parched. That's why I drink orange drink.
turning right? No, I think that the media is turning right. And I think that uh, many of the people who get into office have gotten in there by wearing a, you know, a pseudo-middle-of-the-road kind of a costume and then lean toward the right when they find out that the right is paying the freight once they get into office. I let's dr let our minds drift back to the early days right before Reagan uh, made his big run. There was a deal made between the fundamentalist right and the Republican Party literally purchasing the platform. If you stick the prayer in school on here, if you stick the abortion on here, money, the land of milk and honey will flow yeah, in your but direction. Is that any different from the politics of the Democratic Party in which, you know, all kinds of different interest groups had certain things they wanted to do? It is very different. It is very different because it is so focused and it is so wealthy and it is so protected. There's so much money involved, and I think that it has been the ruination of the GOP. You know, GOP now has, as they say... The grand old party. That's right. Enterprisers on one side and moralizers on the other. I'm with the enterprisers. Let's yeah. get, you know, so let's you, get down you, to you business. So you Jack Kemp then, on, on one hand, when he talks no, no, about I'm, I'm, I don't, no real activity and all that? The line is nice, but I'm not for Jack okay. Campbell, you know what I mean? What I'm saying is that if you were going to be a Republican, you ought to focus on what Republicans are supposed to be good at, which is, let's do business, okay? Yeah. I mean, business is good for the whole world. People like to do business. But when you start trying to legislate morality, you've got a problem, you know? It doesn't yeah. work. It hasn't worked in the past, it won't work in the future. Yeah, but if anything goes, there's got to be some sense of responsibility, don't you think? There's a difference between responsibility and adherence to dogma. When the dogma becomes legislation, that's when you have the danger. I have this horrible fear that the United States could wend its way toward being a fascist theocracy. The cross converted into a symbol of fascism in the service of politics. This is bad. That's why it's, it's Pat is doing well out there. There's some sense I think that he's doing well the because he, with the cross. it is the identification with the cross, the fact that he claims to be speaking on behalf of a supernatural being who has certified his yeah, but, but see, the, the interesting thing when you say that is that he is running, he's trying very carefully to distance himself. I mean, he got into a little thing with Brokaw on election night, on the caucus night, in which he said, you know, it's religious bigotry for you, Mr. Brokaw, to call me a television evangelist. What I was was a TV broadcaster, not Bill. It's the notion that he wants to separate. Uh, okay, but Frank, come on. He wants to separate himself from that religion. He, he would love to, but the fact is, he has been a faith healer. There's videotapes of him doing faith healing. He lies about that. He's yeah. trying to distance well, himself. Trying to distance himself. You know, but you're saying that there's an appeal there, so why? But, Look, you see what I'm saying? toward the end of this little caucus race in Iowa, we saw him pulling out the religious stops. In the, in the front part of it, he's trying to make it look like, oh, I'm only politics, I'm yeah. a broadcaster, I've made millions of dollars, I'm a good businessman, now, you know, look at me, I can do this business for the country. And then at the end, when he had some doubts, here comes the Jesus again.